Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Michael Fuckerini here with Jean-Benet Dalcalo. Hey, guys. You look beautiful tonight. You look gorgeous every night. Thank you. Jacob Ooh. from Matera. Hey, guys. Sex you, look, you look gorgeous. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got a sex appeal alert. <laughs> Danny Dubs, you looking fine as fuck. Damn, yeah. bitch. Mike took his horny goat weed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be working like this, though. Cupid has arrived early. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, do you have plans for Valentine's Day, you perverts? No. Uh, night before, maybe. I ain't one of those suckers out there paying money on <laughs> on the big night. <laughs> Jake, oh. you're a romantic. I know you. Oh, man. Yeah, that's right. I know do you go out to dinner on Valentine's he Day? He covers himself in body chocolate. I got a show. Oink, oink, baby. Oh, I got a little comedy pig showing his snout that's again. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oink, oink. <laughs> Let me get a t five minute guest spot. <laughs> You're doing a guest spot on Valentine's Day. Like <laughs> That'd that. be the like saddest that. thing. Unpaid. Gotta drive <laughs> yeah. far. Yeah. Four hours. Um, Were you ever a Valentine's Day night dinner guy? I went to one, but everything's like, what is it called? Like pre pre prefix. Prefix. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I was like, fuck this. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking sixty five dollars per person, and we decide what you eat. Yeah, suck my dick, yeah. man. Okay. Like, why, yeah. why, why, and why, like, why, 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 why would you do that? Every restaurant does it. Why? Reason. I have no idea. dollars for mozzarella sticks and spaghetti. Because they can get away with it, and these suckers are paying it. That's yep. why. And suck my little ass pee -pee. peach. I'm not doing that again. Uh, where did you guys go? Uh, Pika's Pizza. <laughs> No, it's a nice restaurant though, too. Oh, is it? And they yeah. have a yeah, prefix there. I don't. Yeah. Th I don't think. All right. So I think Pika's Pizza is what it's known for. Mm -hmm. The restaurant itself is called Pika's. Okay. I just call it Pika's Pizza because yeah. I have a dolphin brain. It's an actual sit down, get a server at restaurant. Yeah. He says nice. it like little Caesars in his brain every time. And I will say this: Pika's Pizza. The last time that I sat down to eat there, I got a waitress who was no less than eighty years old. The first thing that she said when she approached my table, Jake, was. I'm dripping wet. Oh, my Lord. Nice. You just came from the walk-in. How's that possible? <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. Not if you saw her. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She's Ooh. beautiful to me, Jake. All right. Have yeah. you seen this lady before? Or is she, uh, oh, is yeah, she a new hire? No, brother. She's been working there for decades. Good. That's great. And she's been... We'll die Hasn't there. been dry since. <laughs> <laughs> the lady's dripping. But she's working hard, baby. That's nice. So you can go in there and, and it, they got salads, appetizers, soups, all the Everything. good stuff. My, my, my tongue is tingling with you I'm, just naming this shit. I'm hungry. You know what I had today? A hot dog and a bagel. Ooh. Same time. But did you take the hot dog and just keep putting it through the bagel? Oh, God. <laughs> this fucking hey, that's how he's eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you ready to flip that coin? I guess I am. Let's flip it. Cupid be with me tonight. Lady Luck, I want to talk about the Joker. Even though... Ah, coming right for me. Knocked your own eye out. That thing's got edges. You won, I know. Good. Almost got Served hurt. Right. Woo. I'm happy I just didn't get hurt. This fucking Johnny come, come Lately. Impractical Jokers fan. Okay, look, we've talked about it before. And I suppose we'll talk about it forever now, because you can't <laughs> seem to get over it. I found him late in life, all right? Mm-hmm. What, what if I became gay when I was 45 years old? Brother, you better believe this issue is like... A quadriplegic approaching a speed bump. You better believe I'm never getting over this. Am I not allowed <laughs> to be gay at 45 because I found out about gay when I was 4.5? Be gay, but preface it by saying, <laughs> I just got into this shit. You're sitting back acting like you were fans of theirs before they even got a true TV deal. So every time I talk about being gay, I have to say, by the way, I just became gay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's I how would. It works. I guess yeah. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, this is new to me. <laughs> yeah, being gay is like being born again. You only talk about the new shit. Damn, so every time I bring up the Jokers, I have to say, uh, the Practical Joker is my favorite show. It makes me laugh lo how harder out loud than anything ever. Mm -hmm. By the way, I found out about them yeah. in August of 2020. That's way too late. I respect you a lot more now. And then nobody's there. Nobody's still talking to me after that. No. You made your bed. I think you ruined my life. <laughs> Or just acknowledge it existed before. Like, I was late to the game. Every time. Yeah. It's all I talk about. So it's going to really eat up a lot of time in my life now. All right. You go on with, and you do bad by your damn self now, Mike. <laughs> That's the name of a black play. Did you know that? Do bad by my damn I can self? Do bad, I can do bad all by myself. Yeah, I know. Damn. Who's it by? Tyler Perry. Is it? I don't know. 
<laughs> Probably not, but... Is it a real play? It is. Oh, man. I didn't know it was a play. I thought it was just a, a movie. I know that was a play, and I used to see commercials for A Good Man is Hard to Find. Um, were they like local productions of the plays for the commercials? I, I think they toured nationally. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. It's like a kind of like a Tony Tina's Wedding kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Huh. I can do better along this. It sounds like it's up Tyler's alley. It is yeah. a Tyler Perry movie. Is okay. it really? Oh, yeah. nice. Was it really a play too, or was it a, he made it, I mean, I'm sure it's a fucking children's book by now. The guy does it all. All forms of media. written by Tyler Perry, produced by Tyler Perry Studios. <laughs> Executive producer, Medea. <laughs> Released September 11th. What? Whoa. 2001? 2009. Uh, <laughs> but still, he had plenty yeah. of time to change the date. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Muhammad Atta had that motto, I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> it's based on his life. <laughs> you know, I never heard that before. <laughs> Learn something new every time you talk to a dumb fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about 9-11 recently You know how Seth MacFarlane always says Like he barely just didn't get on one of those planes mm -hmm. What if he got on one of the planes And when it became apparent what was happening Was going to happen If he just started doing Family Guy voices And it turns out a couple of the hijackers were Family Guy fans mm -hmm. oh. If it could have stopped One of them Yeah mm -hmm. Damn Could have been Sounds like a little Quentin Tarantino kind of project That you could do Little, little re re imagination of history. I like reimagining history. Could you imagine? Can you do? A I'm a reimagineer, so of course I can imagine whatever you're going to come up with. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture what Mike would reimagine at uh, desegregating schools. <laughs> In your best, Chris Chris Griffin. Can you give us the a, kids got fire hoses too? <laughs> on flight ninety three. Right, that, the one that they took over? The PA one. All right, got the, it back? Yeah. This is uh, Chris Sir, Griffin. Sir, right let's as, roll. Right as the plane is about to make contact with the World Trade Center. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> is that what voice you think Seth would have said it in if he was ready about yeah, to hit? no doubt. <laughs> All right, y'all ready for tonight's stinker? We have a gay pedophile. Oh, no. He's sitting right next to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whew, damn. damn. I knew I smelled bacon because he fried your ass. I know. Oh, boy. To Bacon's going to come into play at some point tonight. Whoa. I wish I'd made some for you. God, I'm such a fuck. I'm so hungry. Fuck. I know. I'm so horny, John. <laughs> what you trying to do? <laughs> I don't know. I think we can both get satisfied at Wendy's, though. Mm. Have it your way. Fuck, that's not Wendy's. <laughs> it's the second time in a row I've made this mistake on a goddamn show. Damn. I did it last week on Dad Meat. You did the wrong fast food? God, fuck me. Slogan? Yeah. Let's do call it blasphemy right there, man. Man. I'm never doing this again. Get your shit together. So this gay pedophile is named John Scott Dunkel. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> His name's John Scott Dunkel, and brother, does he look like a John Scott Dunkel? <laughs> does he, <laughs> did he like change his name to fit his personality? He kept his name to fit inside kids. Oh, man. That is a terrible thing to say, Jake. Yikes. Yikes. Jake, why did you say that? I did not say that. Again, second week in a row. <laughs> you're doing all these bad things. Well, he was born October 11, 1960 in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Oh. Yeah, it's impressive, isn't it? Oh, man, he was there for a lot. <laughs> Somewhere like all, all the 60s up until Manson? Yeah, well, all right. Yeah, he was. So he eventually ends up moving to an area called the Peninsula. You familiar with the Peninsula? No, where's that? Uh, it's the area between like the Bay and the Pacific Ocean, like below San Francisco and I think west of San Jose. Is it like Monterey and Carmel and all that kind of I stuff? I think those are yeah. within that region. Okay. And he was known as the Peninsula Serial Killer. Oh. For that reason. Huh? little wordy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not one of these guys that named himself. Yeah. <laughs> this was just a guy who had a newspaper deadline to beat. It was just like <laughs> fucking... Yeah, really phoned it in. Peninsula fucking stabber <laughs> man. Local fella. Local, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he grew up, mom and dad together, two brothers. I believe he had a sister as well. And it seems like his dad was physically and verbally abusive, Jake. Okay. So, John, do me a favor. Crack Jake so he can know what it's like. Please don't. Please. You made me do this. Oh, God. Ah, damn it. So, Jake, you know what it's like now. <sighs> yeah. Verbally abusive, too, John, before I move on. I gotta be 
You fucking comedy pig. God you greedy damn. Greedy comedy pig. Damn it. <laughs> greedy fucker. <laughs> Thank you. Now, on top of this, his parents eventually divorced, but they got back together and remarried. Whoa. Aww. Yeah, very fucked up. Happy ending. No. No. The worst okay. possible ending, Jake. Oh, no. <laughs> no. This fucker was dyslexic. And uh, I've read various various numbers for what his IQ was. Some people said his IQ was hard to gauge because of him being dyslexic, and other people have just flat out said that he was a stone-cold fucking moron with an IQ of 90. Were they giving people IQ tests? How were they de determining this? This probably happened when he got to prison. Okay. Because at that point, like, I guess they're trying to figure out competency to stand trial. Gotcha. Whether or not you're insane, whether or not you are intelligent enough to stand trial. So unless you're being uh, convicted of a crime, you have to pay the 1099 on the Mensa website to take the IQ test. <laughs> yeah. We should all take IQ tests one night. I think that you know, would make I would good. do that. Yeah. I'm dreading the results. Man. <laughs> Maybe you'll be smarter than me. You know, the result, like, that. there's a cheap hack to do it. You just get a Q-tip. You just rub it around your asshole. You stick it in an envelope. What's that test called? Who do you send it to? Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Who does he send it to? He sends it to me, and your mom ends up <laughs> opening the package because she's over my house anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right. What were you saying about stuff? And then I was about to say that she always says, I think these lollipops are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. Clearly not getting in to Mensa. Oh, uh, the gross. Whole swap. The, the gross. asshole swap. You might have crossed the line on that one, honestly. <laughs> That is it's all right. I, I, I come to you to make peace right now. I that was over the line, and you did not deserve that. And I didn't get it for a minute. So, and I'm I'm going to treat you to your Taco Bell tonight, and I'm also going to treat your mother to some mouthwash. <laughs> some what? Mouthwash. That's not what you said the first. Time. I tried, <laughs> brother. Sometimes words have to go over speed bumps in my mouth. <laughs> so just just know that's what I'm working with. When you when you. And the mud be all over your eye if you found out that I was going through a series of strokes. <laughs> Dude, do we need to call an ambulance? <laughs> Wouldn't the mud be all over your eye? Isn't that an expression? It I've, sure is not. No, I've never heard it that It most mud. certainly isn't. <laughs> all right, well, I guess I'm in third place in the IQ running right now. That'll be one of the things Jesus. where Google says, I'm not quite sure. There's no results <laughs> for this. It's like, wow, how the fuck is that possible? I'll run it by your mom, see what she says. Jesus Christ. Learn a new trick. I refuse. <laughs> I get this. So our dear friend John Scott Dunkel says that <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's too stupid. <laughs> he says that uh, at one point when he's a child, his brother throws him out of a fucking window. Would explain a lot. It was a basement window, but <laughs> <laughs> he says from the grades six to nine, he fantasized constantly about murder. Damn. Which is tough, Jake, because you know how, how often you're dealing with boners at that age. Yeah. Imagine dealing with boners and murderous thoughts. How do you funnel that? You know, that's too much. That's too much for my brain to process. Yeah, why are you bringing that textbook up to the chalkboard? To cover your boner or to bash your teacher's brain in? <laughs> you sick freak. <laughs> Somebody call the cops on this kid. Why can't it be both, John? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think a teacher would at least appreciate if she was getting beaten with a textbook? Because <laughs> she knows knows now that it wasn't a boner. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that she would. I think maybe she would just tell you to open up to a certain chapter <laughs> you guys were on, <laughs> to keep you up on your lessons. You know. So our dear friend Dunkel mm -hmm. starts drinking and smoking weed at the age of 15. So pretty cool guy. Mm -hmm. Sounds cool. What age did you guys start drinking? 17. For drinking, 13 for weed. Ooh. Yeah, probably 14 for drinking and like 15 or 16 for weed. Okay. Yeah. That checks out. That's average, right? Yeah. Maybe around the same time? I think I was 16 for booze and probably the same for weed. I liked it all. I didn't get into coke till I was 26. I didn't do it for the first time until my 23rd birthday. Oh, congrats. In Costa Rica. Ooh. I'll let you know uh, my guy when you move down there. <laughs> Imagine if I still had his number. <laughs> You damn devil. All right, so when this motherfucker turns 20, his dad buys him a Honda Civic. Ballin'. And he's dumb as shit, and he's got a car. So naturally, kids in the neighborhood are going to take advantage of him oh. and ask him for rides constantly. 
when he gets to be of age, they're asking him to buy them booze. Damn. He's doing it? Yeah, he's doing it, man. Gotta fit in. He is. He's trying to fit in. Kids made fun of him constantly, dude. <clears throat> he had greasy hair. He had pimples. He wore a retainer for fucking ever. And he was a smaller fellow. Smaller and chubbier. Never knew the company of a woman. Although... <laughs> weird way to say that <laughs> <laughs> never had biblical n carnal knowledge of <laughs> the fairer sex now there was at least one instance or one lady that he was trying to get sexual gratification from but she would never give it to him uh, she kind of let him do something one time but i'll get into that a little bit later oh man just a tip no nah, it it's just, weird. Just the yeah. Q-tip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From his gross pee-pee poo-poo joke earlier. <laughs> now, in the early 80s, he holds a bunch of different jobs. He gets fired from most of them for stealing or doing fucked up shit. He works at fucking Toys R Us. He works at a jewelry shop where he ends up getting caught stealing a bunch of jewels from. Jesus Christ. He's a security guard. He works at a uh, computer assembly plant. Yeah. And he gets caught stealing computer parts. Valuable stuff. He knew what to steal. Pretty good, man. So he's not doing too bad. 1981, he's like, you know, I'm going to try to do something with my life. So he joins a group called Youth for Christ. It's kind of like a uh, training program that they put these kids through to kind of recruit other kids. Mm -hmm. He drops out because he says the training was too hard. <laughs> Jesus. It sounds like a gateway <laughs> to pedophilia. It does, yeah. Yeah. I was kind of uh, involved in a christian missionary kind of Were thing you? yeah, yeah. More. i mean outside of I, I avoided all the catholic uh altar boy pedophilia <clears throat> i think our school's still safe as far as i know um but the skate park i went to as a kid was run by like a christian missionary group and they had like a new year's eve party where you got there thought we could just all skateboard all night <clears throat> but it was like uh you know let us in prayer and a bunch of shit and it was like all right, I see what you're trying to do, but mm -hmm. I'm already, I already got bop, baptized, you know? They already bopped me. <laughs> <laughs> Did any of them ever get close to your half pipe? <laughs> <laughs> it was only a quarter pipe back then. Grew. <clears throat> no, it is and now an eighth pipe. <laughs> <laughs> you had the surgery? <laughs> <laughs> you had asterisk bypass? <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you brought me the coffee tonight. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't ask for it. Actually, fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, get this. You guys will appreciate this. In November of 1981, he gets his first DUI. Damn. They had to be hard to get back then. Brother, he got four of them. Whoa. He hit shit, right? There weren't checkpoints back then, were there? I don't know. Yeah, DUI back in the early 80s, especially in California, you seems to be like the kind of thing. Running into shit. There needs to be, there's probably a kid with tire marks on him. <laughs> <laughs> Which he eventually ends up doing. So I wouldn't put it past him. One of his four was a, a hit and no, run. No, uh, there were two hit and runs. One that he eventually they figured out it was him that did it, but then there was another one that he never got popped for. Were they, um, did the people die or was it? No, one kid was left for dead. Damn. He was uh he was walking near a wooded area and uh our dear friend Dunkel fucking ran him down with the car. Jesus. On purpose? He did, yeah. He briefly stuffed him in the car and then pulled over to like a um a cliff, pushed him out of the car Whoa. over the cliff, but thankfully the kid didn't fall down as far as he could have gone. The kid was unconscious for a while. He eventually woke up. And was able to, like, crawl out to the road where somebody eventually found him. Yeah. And he needed to have a, a kidney removed. Oh and uh, he, I think he had a lacerated spleen as well. Jesus. God damn. Yeah, so he was on the hunt for these these poor kids. Yeah, and that was not one of his DUIs. That wasn't, no, no, no. That no. was an attempted murder. No, that was yeah, an murder. attempted murder, yeah. That was a kid in play. <laughs> <clears throat> What, what did he say? Nothing. Unreal, Jake. Un friggin' real. Now, November 8th, 1981, he does commit his first murder. So he's he's befriended a family, uh, this family called the Davies family. And he calls the parents mom and dad. His friend is their son, Mark. That's so weird already. What's that? He did calls he call them, somebody else yeah, mom and dad? Yeah. He never did that? No. no, have you? No, I haven't. But I know that people sometimes do that. 
It's not something I would do. I don't even call my mother-in-law a mom. Mm. Yeah, that's something I struggle with. Like, bitch, I ain't coming out of that pussy. I, I need to know what them walls feel like if I'm going to be calling you mommy. <laughs> my lord. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> Can I speak on them walls? I didn't think so. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I didn't think so, Rachel. <laughs> But yeah, he calls these people mom and dad, and they take him in. They feel bad for him. So they know he's got kind of a fucked up life. He would come over, he would hang with their son, Mark, and they would just kind of sit in the driveway and blast music from his car. And that was his thing. He would drive around just cranking music, and that's what he was known for. Unfortunately, the parents go on a date one night, and at this point, Mark is kind of like tossed Dunkel to the side. So he's not really fucked with Dunkel, and Dunkel's kind of <laughs> upset that he's such a loser yeah. and doesn't really have any friends. So Dunkel takes to Mark's younger brother, John, who is only 15 years old. And at this point, Dunkel's 21. <laughs> oh, boy. Recipe Ugh. for disaster. Mm -hmm. Did you hang out with older people when you were younger? Not really. Nah, maybe like a few grades ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, not as a kid. Like, I think once I hit my 20s, then like maybe some people who are like closer to 30. Yeah. I'd start seeing, but... Yeah, not not as a child. That's weird. I get it, man. Yeah, did you? No, I was like, a friend and I were briefly recruited by white supremacists, and he was an older guy. Yeah. It was like a, a couple weeks where my buddy Danny was like, oh, you got to meet this guy, you got to meet this guy. He's so cool. He was the biggest fucking dork on earth. <laughs> and we would go over there, and it was like two weekends in a row we went over there to drink. And this is the guy, I think I told you guys, he had the little baby alligator in his house. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember this. And in hindsight, it was probably just a recruiting tool for white supremacy. The so, gator? Yeah. Uh, that's how they get you? It got me. That's how they get you? It got me in the door. I never took the white supremacy. So we would go over there for these couple weekends, <laughs> and we would drink... Thank uh, you clarifying, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we would just drink Coors Lights while this dickhead's blasting these white this white supremacy music, which is the fucking worst. How old were you? 18. Okay. And they were in their 20s? Mid-20s, yeah. Yeah. Man, that is weird. I, I just wanted to look at that baby alligator, man. <laughs> Shaving your head as you look at the alligator. <laughs> yeah, my hair's falling into his tank and he's eating it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's how they get the shaved, head, shaved heads. They just put a baby alligator on your head and you fucking take it all off. Oh, I did not know that. But yeah, that guy was a, and his roommate, they were massive fucking losers. They were just hanging out with younger boys man when <laughs> you got nothing going on that's where you're Dude, reptiles like... and race hate <laughs> ethnic hate <laughs> jesus christ where'd they go wrong i should have set the gator loose to see if he would take off or if he would hang see if he was about that lifestyle yeah racist gator yeah mm -hmm. he could have been in the sewer for the last 20 years <laughs> oh no sewer gator oh i really wish i set him loose i could probably find that house Let's go, let's do it together. Let's You'll go, go with me. Let's go live on for content. We'll free this uh this little baby alligator from the chains of white supremacy. Well, we'll hang out, see what they have to say for a couple hours, mm -hmm. and then we'll do it. <laughs> You'll be the one that puts the duct tape around his mouth. All if, right, because I, I can guarantee you this: if he's not in the white supremacy, that little motherfucker's into bite supremacy. <laughs> All right, I have a heart out now. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, Dunkel starts hanging with this young kid named John, and the parents come home from their date. The kid's not there. Their door is open a little bit. They don't think anything of it. They just think the kid might have fucking went out. They're just having fun. They're not too, uh, too fucking broken up about it. The parents go to bed. They wake up the next morning. They're getting ready for church. They go into John's room to see if he's getting ready because he normally goes with them on Sundays. He's not there. Now they're fucking worried sick. They start contacting friends and neighbors to see if they could help him look for John or if anybody's seen him. They contact the police. Nobody's seen him. Uh, Dunkel actually joins the search party to look for him. Uh, he takes a stack of flyers like he's going to put them up. But this is where they start to suspect him. When he dumps them all in a trash can? In their trash can. <laughs> no, no way. I'm oh. No. <laughs> no, but he's... So, a, I'm so fucking stupid. I believed you. <laughs> he's a fixture at their house. Once this boy goes missing, they, they, they don't see him again until Mrs. Davies goes to talk to him in jail. 
Whoa. Because they suspect him pretty early on. And police even look at him pretty early on, but there's nothing to tie him in. They don't know where this kid is. He's just disappeared. And he's still calling them mom and dad at this point. I don't know if he's calling them anything at okay. this point. <laughs> calling them late for dinner. Jake John, I'm going to ask you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us? <laughs> you can talk to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You act like I don't have a friend here, right? <laughs> Working the board. <laughs> so he never goes back to their house. In they don't just don't know where this kid is. Yeah. There's there's rumored sightings of him in another state, but they don't check out. It's just you know, it's the early eighties, so kids are just a lot freer than they are right now. And there's probably a lot of like fifteen year old kids just fucking functioning like adults. Yeah. 1982 rolls around. He gets a second DUI, Jake. Mm. You ever got a DUI, Jake? No. You want one? No. Done. <laughs> you want any in you? Um, have you avoided any? No. <laughs> now we're talking. Yes, he had. Mm -hmm. He's gotten out I of can it. tell. I can smell it. On him. <laughs> I walked the line a couple times. You know that. I know it, brother. You know that's true. Mm -hmm. I do stunts for him, dude. I'm Whoa! The, I can touch my nose from mm -hmm. anywhere. Look at that. You're <laughs> gonna get a job at SeaWorld. What do you think is the trick that normally gets you out of DUIs that you know how to do that most people don't? I tell them to put their finger up, and then I run straight forward for a boop. <laughs> Eyes closed. <laughs> Get out of here. Damn. You lovable little John, scamp. I yeah. thought for sure you were going to say the NSYNC dance that you know verbatim. The pop uh, yeah. breakdown from yeah. 2002? I don't think that would get me out of it. I think it could. You think? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll try it tonight. <laughs> Man, I would love to see you get out of DUI. I bet the... Dog would even try to give you a paw. <laughs> I guess you don't have to be drunk to try to invoke a DUI, right? Oh, you can tease cops all the time. Yeah, and let, make them make you walk the line, mm -hmm. and then blow a zero point zero. I I would I would drink one beer so you at least have it on their breath. <laughs> sneak up behind them at the mall and try to take their gun. <laughs> and then when he turns around to freak out, be like, "I'm sorry, my car isn't starting." <laughs> And then he's got to ask you, have you been drinking? You'd be like, yeah, but I'm out of money, so that's why I got to drive home. And at that point, he'll go to you to your car. He'll wait for you to try to start the car. Once you get behind that wheel, he thinks he's got you. Mm -hmm. That's the time where you do your two-man boop. Mm -hmm. But the most important step, I think, that we all need to recognize is, is that to start this process, you have to pretend to steal his gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wiggle it a little bit. You don't even have to take it out. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a stick and I'll poke it from a couple <laughs> just, feet back. Just take off the Velcro, put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if I was butt-fucking a cop, instead of putting my hands on his <laughs> hips, I would put one on the trigger, the other one on his, on his uh, what do they call it, his service belt? <laughs> yeah, you know what it's called, you fucking cop pervert. <laughs> <laughs> one on, no, the other one on the taser. Ooh. Maybe tase that ass. Oh my god, I forgot about tasers. Maybe tase, tase, tase that ass. ass. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Imagine what imagine the way a bitch twerk when you tase that ass. <sighs> Suck the cum right out of my dick. <laughs> <laughs> my pepper spray dick. <laughs> they still got that, right? Pepper spray? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We should get pepper sprayed one day on here. <laughs> that actually would be pretty good content. That would. I think we should go through anything that a typical criminal might experience. We should get pepper sprayed. We should get tased. We should get a little bit bit by a dog. Shot in the chest while we have a vest on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh There's so many different things that we could do on this show. There are. And I hope we don't do any of those. <laughs> yeah. So, dudes, get this. After his second DUI, he attempts to kill his friend John Wolf. Second John. Yeah, it's a New Year's Eve party, and he smacks him in the head with a two by four at this party. In front of everyone? I think it was a two-man party, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one hell of a ball drop, I'll tell you that, much. It's more of a New Year's skeeve party. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, all right. You know how you do pussy hands like this? Mm hmm So, gay pussy hands. <laughs> you make the circle with your finger, I put my finger through, and you suck my finger. <laughs> That's gay pussy hands. <laughs> How did I never know that? He had him going too. He's like, okay, now what? <laughs> I, I saw the, his bottom jaw drop before he realized what was happening. <laughs> Use that as part of your DUI checkpoint trick. 
Oh, I'll try to suck his fingers. Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. I'm I know try. It is. I'm about to love that. You can't fight back when you're getting your fingers sucked. <laughs> I've seen it get out of a couple of UFC submissions that way. <laughs> just <laughs> someone gets your leg locked up, you just start sucking on the fingers. What are you doing to my finger? <laughs> Pressure points. <laughs> <laughs> so we're into November of 1982 right now, and this is where he hits the kid with his car. Clearly tries to kill him, but the kid survives, thankfully. All fucked up, but he ends up surviving. Uh. No, after this is when the uh, New Year's Eve striking with the two by four happens. Before that, he tries to stab another friend. He actually does stab him. Uh, the kid thinks that he's been poked in the back with a stick. So he's yelling at him. It's like, why did you do that and take that fucking stick out of my back? And he's laughing about it. Damn. Dunkel's being a real fucking dickhead about this, but he stabbed this kid. Jesus. Yeah. Wow, that's a tough kid. It is. What do you think you would do if you were stabbed as a child, Jake? <sighs> Man. Probably chased him with a pool skimmer. That's the go-to anger move. John, what about you, brother? Why was he near a pool skimmer in this situation? I would cry like a little bitch getting I stabbed. Know. It does hurt, though. Danny was actually stabbing. I know. How bad did it hurt when you realized what happened, Dan? Oh, I <clears throat> I bitched up real quick. I, I fainted. I might get I, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, I don't remember feeling... Any pain. I just I've, as soon as you realize it, you were like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> See y'all later. Yeah, yeah, I looked down and my khakis were red. Mm. And I fainted. Jesus. Jesus, man. Wow. I still Thanks for I... bringing that memory back for him. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I stay asking people about drama. drama. <laughs> man, have you been stabbed? No. No? No. Tonight's the night. Uh, it's coming, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in danger of being having any serious injury thrust upon me. No broken bones, no scars at all, no stitches. I've, I've gotten, I've gotten broken bones, gotten jumped a few times, but nothing too bad. Yeah, a bunch of older kids tried to uh, jump me and my. They did jump me and my buddies after watching Ladybugs <sighs> in the theater. Man. Were you guys like walking outside, snapping your hands, calling yourselves ladybugs, <laughs> asking for it? No, we didn't ask for anything, man. I stood my ground though. I had uh, this really awesome Atlanta Falcon starter jacket on. Pride and joy. I love this thing so much. We got approached by like these kids. We were, I think, twelve years old, and these kids were at least like sixteen. So okay, just a crew of absolute fucking losers. Yeah, were fucking with us, and the one kid told me to give him my jacket, mm-hmm. and I refused. And then eventually we realized, like, we should probably make a run for it. We made a run for it. And one kid started beating the three of us up. <laughs> so I don't think it counts as jumping, maybe, if one kid's beating the three of well, us up. It's like a reverse jumping. But he is at least 16. You got the jacket and only got one third of a licking. So mm-hmm. I made it home. Like, we, we ran to my other two buddies' house initially. And I knew my mom was waiting for me at the theater, but I had run away from the theater. So I was like, all right, the be- I'm not going back that way, but I'm going to go home at this point. So from the theater to my fucking house was four to five miles. Oh, so my God. It was a long run slash walk. <clears throat> I eventually made it home. My mom walks in the door, and she's like, what happened? And instantly, I just break down in tears. And she calls the police, and a cop comes, and he's like, uh, you want to tell me what happened? And as soon as I open my mouth to start telling this cop the story, I just start crying hysterically. But he's su- such a professional. He listens to me tell my story. And he's like, all right, we'll keep an eye out for them. But I don't think there's anything we can do. Man. Yeah. You are Damn. such a fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I cried twice. You barely even got touched. <laughs> I haven't been able to watch Ladybug since. <laughs> Oh, man. And if I'm being truthful here, right. I was glad that Jonathan Brandis killed himself because that's another <laughs> another chapter in my life that gets closed forever. I don't have to be reminded of him ever again. That's why you celebrate Rodney Dangerfield's death day. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get any respect, and neither does Jonathan Brandis in my eyes. Damn. You boys will love this. Dunkel had a very small penis. <laughs> so more of a dinkle. <laughs> Dunkle had a dinkle. (laughs) Um, It was less than five inches. (laughs) Not that bad. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I if mean, you're if you're a child, no. Hard? Why are they measuring his penis hard? They measure. How do they have this? They measure everything when you get to jail. <laughs> the reason why? All right, he goes to the hospital for what he's about to do, and he explains to them why he did this. So the reason why he's conducting this self experiment is because he has a small bird. <laughs> what do you think he's doing to his bird to make it grow? Is he stretching it? Mm -mm. Is he flicking it? Nope. Putting it in like a vice and like trying to back away? No, I will I will give you a little hint. This may be what caused this, but he took a shit ton of acid before he did this. Oh, man. Try to spin it real fast? No. John, you're going to want to brace yourself for this. Okay. But Dunkel injected bacon fat into his dick. Now, why the fuck would he do that? What the fuck? What? So it would grow. All right. Thick really cut? Was fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Hickory smoke? Apple smoke? Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking here, Mike? <laughs> yeah, he actually comes syrup. Man, imagine how good that would be. Like, if, if you're sucking a dude's dick and you taste bacon while you're down there. I don't know if I would enjoy it. <laughs> you want to try it? <laughs> Hey, I'll try anything once. Jake, hook him up with that oh, scrapple. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! Shooting anything into your penis. Yeah. Mm. I mean, and not getting high. I guess he was trying to get high, high on the hog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, he's trying to give a taste of that lap scrapple. <laughs> you, you take it to hog heaven. That's what he's trying to do. Are pigs known for having big dicks? What was his thought no. process? Jeez. No, but he's trying to fatten it up. Trying to get a chode. <laughs> what if you, <laughs> what if you injected it with the pig grease and then it just fucking swirled around like a pigtail? Oh, I would love that. <laughs> that would be. That would we might be. have to try that. <laughs> yeah, let's give that a try. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> uh, guys, you're not gonna like this. July and August of 1983, he gets two more DUIs, back to back Damn. months, baby. Damn, who's letting him keep his license at this point? They take it away now. He gets 120 days in jail, and he gets his license revoked. Damn. Yeah. 120? Mm-hmm. They were slapping it hard back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still slapping it hard here in the 20s. You fucking <laughs> devil, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so October of 1984, he's going to commit another murder. So he's a, he's a big hang-in-the-woods guy, as most fucking losers in their 20s are who supply alcohol to kids. He's hanging out in the woods when this uh, this boy gets dropped off for soccer practice with his friends. And uh, when they drop him off, there's like a half hour before practice. So when he goes down, he, there's, uh, there's a lake close by. What the fuck is the name of this lake? It's like Dogwater Lake, I believe. So it's next to the fields, and you can go down, and there's a tire swing where you can swing out over the water. So he's down there. He's having fun by himself. Unfortunately, Dunkel's down there. Practice goes on. Uh, the boys, one of the boys' parents comes to pick him up. He's not there. So the boy's dad contacts his friend. They talk to the kids that he was with earlier. They're like, all right, tell us where you last saw him. They go down to the trail leading down to like where this fucking, um, this lake is. Yeah. And um, the dad's friend shines a light and he sees the boy's shoes and he walks up closer and he sees the boy's legs. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, um, ev eventually they realized and the police realized that there was a stabbing and this poor kid was stabbed 23 times. Jesus Christ. Yeah. How old was the kid? 12. 12 said? Yeah. God damn, man. So this is in Belmont, California. All, th all three of his murders occur in Belmont, California, which is part of this peninsula. So on December 4th and December 7th, he's interviewed twice. So for the, for the first disappearance and then the second one, and the second murder. He's interviewed. They still can't pin anything on him. They're, what, ends up, what ends up bringing the attention to him is there were some other girls hanging out in the woods there, and they're able to give police enough of a description as to where a sketch artist puts together a sketch they pass it around the local schools, and one of the one of the uh, teachers at a school is like, "Oh, that's fucking John Scott Dunkel." And the police are like, "Who the fuck is this?" And the teacher's like, "Oh, that was just some fucking weirdo that hangs around and tries to make friends with kids." They're like, "All right, well, we got to talk to this fucking guy." 
Jesus. So the girls that see him in the woods say that they saw an old man with a retainer drinking Budweiser. I still had the container. <laughs> or the retainer. Mm -hmm. Jesus, man. <laughs> so now, like, they're thinking, like, all right, so they got two murders on their hands, and they think that he probably did it, but they cannot find any evidence conclusively linking him to these murders. Okay. Because they so strongly believe that he did do it, the police end up sending an undercover officer to work at his job with him in the hopes of befriending him, and it works. There's a cop named Lisa Thomas who befriends him, and Dunkel works at Carl's Jr. You a Carl's Jr. man, John? Who the hell isn't, buddy? Jake, are you one? I don't think I've ever had it. There's one. You ever had Rowley's? No. It's the same thing. Uh, you mean Hardy's? Yes. <laughs> My bad, I got my Checkers rallies, my East Coast, West Coast fast food chains. Actually, we should edit that out. I look like a fucking Nimrod. You do. Yeah. God damn, I'm stupid. <laughs> we get, ladies and gentlemen, we got them. <laughs> Are you also new to fast food? God damn. <laughs> I just started eating stuff in 2020. Yeah, he started the same night he started watching Jokers, Dan. <laughs> yeah. I did have Wendy's that night. <laughs> oh, you did. In Kanab, Utah. Oh, wow. The only fast food restaurant in the damn town. They're open until midnight. Oh, my God. Jim. So your love of Impractical Jokers, then, is clearly a nostalgic thing of mm -hmm. this time you were in Utah. No. Uh, no. Actually, I, I would respect that more if it was. No, it's one you, of the few things that makes me laugh out loud. You were on time. top of the world when you went when you first saw Impl Impractical Jokers. I, you was. Were in Utah. I was. Yeah. So it's that feeling of like being in that room in Utah. Like going, that's the, knowing I'm going to the wave the next yeah. day. Yeah. Mm. So now every time you see the Jokers, you're fulfilled. Mm, you know. But it is, John. Say yes because Hello. that will make me respect you more. <laughs> well, that's not something I want. So. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Whose ass is fried now, bacon bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I just looked at the map. I just stayed next to Belmont, California. That's like right next to the airport in San Francisco. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> no, now he's fucking turned on me for the rest of the episode. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll book a room for your mother and I there. <laughs> Do they have one of those uh, I don't heart deserve hot tubs? that, but I suppose you can say it. Mm. Do they have one of those heart hot tubs at that hotel? Uh, heart hot tub. Uh, no, not to my knowledge. No hot tubs that they had there. <laughs> Jake, do you know if they had any hot tubs? Yo, I'm staying out of this. <laughs> no, nah, maybe you should get in. Maybe you should get in the hot yeah, get tub, in the hot with, tub with us. <laughs> All three of us are in this fucking hot tub yeah. now, whether you like it or not, Jake. Oh, man. That is a lot of meat in there. <laughs> All right, John. So they, they send this undercover cop to work with Dunkel at Carl's Jr. Lisa Thomas. Yes. I love the route this is taking. I do, too. Dude, this is like fucking deep cover. Dude, this is sick. I read an interview with her where she's still very fucked up by this because she really poured everything she had into this and she was really doing a good job with getting him to open up about shit. Yeah. She never got him to admit to the murders, but she felt as though she was on that track. Damn. This is 21 Gum Street. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she talks about like what kind of employee he was at Carl's Jr. And uh, she said he was prone to temper tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> You've cursed me. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was me. What did you say earlier? It's <laughs> you said it's your words are going through speed bumps? Yes. <laughs> I have what doctors call a fat tongue, Jake. <laughs> Thank you. It's all right, man. I, I'm with you, dude. I'm My speech is on a driver's ed course, so <laughs> you're all right. So Lisa Thomas says that uh, Dunkel is prone to temper tantrums at Carl's Jr., and when asked to describe what his temper tantrums looked like, she says, well, there were two that came to mind. One, she once saw him throw an entire basket of fries across the restaurant because he was <laughs> upset about something. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so hot and dangerous. What was like a, in the fry thing? In the fucking basket. He just launched oh, it. Oh, shit. Okay. I thought it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> also, um, he, was he was responsible for the fries and the onion rings. So part of the fry duties, double duty, baby. Yeah, man, it, it's it's a lot of pressure. With, with great power comes a lot of responsibility. <laughs> yeah. So when you're the fry man, you're also responsible for cutting up blocks of lard to put into the fry later. 
She says, it struck her as very odd that when he was tasked with cutting up the blocks of lard, rather than slice through it with a butcher knife, he would stab it. <laughs> oh, my God. Could you imagine? Stabbing lard? Yeah. You can, you can see the kitchen <laughs> when you're ordering inside of Carl's Jr. <laughs> Just ordering your fucking, yeah, I'll take a couple tacos. Is that guy stabbing the lard back there? <laughs> What's his deal? Now, you guys remember that I told you his dad bought him a Honda Civic, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. His Honda Civic was riddled with dents. <laughs> Aside from hitting people with his fucking car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was also prone to temper tantrums where he would kick and punch his own car. Damn. It's a city car. <laughs> it's nice on the inside. Uh, I got to tell you one other thing about his temper tantrums. When he was pulled over for one of his DUIs, the cop had like a checklist to document how he was doing on the field sobriety test. And I guess when he realized he was about to fail this field sobriety test, he took the uh, checklist out of the cop's hand and ripped it up and threw it at him. <laughs> Dude, that's... <laughs> they love that. <laughs> that's a good move. He was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic, and he claimed that God would often speak to him. And he claimed that one time when he was at uh, San Francisco International Airport, God yelled at him so loudly that it knocked him over in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> when did this diagnosis gate change from <laughs> F30 to F4 gate change <laughs> I imagine it probably followed his bacon fat dick incident <laughs> that sounds like a band <laughs> it's uh, Brian Setzer's first band <laughs> before they got the fancy suits yeah, yeah they cleaned it up yeah, they did. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm going to go see Bacon Fat Dick Incident this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no way, dude. How'd you get tickets? Oh. <laughs> was number 69 on the call list? So. I lost a radio station contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you ever win tickets online or on a radio station? Mm -mm. No, I uh, I went to a concert one time at the, um, the Camden one, mm -hmm. and there was like a little stand that was like free cruise. Ooh. So I gave my number, and then they called me, and it just ends up being a timeshare. <clears throat> yeah, pitch. Uh, and I did not end up on that cruise. I, I but I did end up end up with some primo beachfront property three blocks from the beach <laughs> in um, Clearwater, Florida. Oh, I love Clearwater. I know oh, you yeah. do. I didn't know it was. So it's like basically in Tampa, right? It's like right outside. It's of not it. far. Yeah, yeah. It's like thirty minutes, I think. Yeah, you can drive there. Yeah, <laughs> really uh, beautiful place. Hulk Hogan has a store there. What's the store? It's like Hulkamania's fucking Hulk Shack or something. Hulk That's remembered. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy something from that store without a doubt. No doubt, man. I really want to go there now. Did you see his most recent Instagram post? No. He had a Komodo dragon in his backyard. He's like, brother, I've had a lot of snakes come through my life, but this one will bite you even worse than any of those or something like he that. He owns it? <laughs> I don't know what it was doing there. I didn't think you could have them in this country. I don't know if it's allowed. Well, he's advertising it. He's got one in his backyard, though. The guy's flaunting it. Running wild. Yeah. Does he live in Clearwater? Is that why his store is there? He used to live in uh, Treasure Island, which is it, Treasure like Island. Disney World? No, it's uh, it's right uh, right by St. Pete. and um, mm -hmm. Okay. It's like once you cross the river like to like the Gulf, like they have like Treasure Island, and then they have a few other um, beaches. He's, he's the king of that whole... Uh, what do they call it? The western coast of Florida. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Gulf Coast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the word. The Gulf Coast. Yes, okay. We just said golf 10 times. <laughs> Did we really? Oh, man. Jake, back me, back me listen, up or him up. One of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do something? I Listen. Just back it up for all of us. Oh. Yeah, back that thing up on us. <laughs> Mike, Jake, I, you look good. <laughs> Would you back that thing up? I've... I've uh, I was standing in line waiting to see Papa Roach mm -hmm. at the Trocadero. Oh, no way. Right? Uh, Love, Hate, Tragedy tour. Oh. Their sophomore album. What radio contest did you lose for that? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I bought tickets for this one. And Whoa. I waited, and I was excited. I even waited for the band afterwards. You met Papa Roach? Yeah, I met Jerry Horton, the guitar player. Was Mama Roach there? Mama Roach was, no. They, they are uh, going through a custody battle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but while we were waiting in line, somebody came up. They're, like, counting people. And like, oh, here you go. And they <coughs> handed us tickets to see uh, Saliva and Head P.E. for the oh, Jaeger Meister tour. Did you go? 
Yeah, yeah, we went. It was like the next night, and uh, Saliva, they're fine. Yeah. If you're into them, good. But I mean, they're they kind of a couple of hits, but I don't give a shit. It was just fun to go, and it, we weren't even 21, so that was cool because we we got to get a shot anyway. Oh, oh nice! Because we Very had nice. like the tickets. Nice. Yeah. Well, they just kind of like every five people won tickets, and you. Yeah, won, I guess so. Yeah. Good position. Good for you. You never told me about the head PE concert. I would have oh. never given a shit about. <laughs> Dude, head PE rules, man. Really? Yeah, they rule. No way. Yeah. I refuse to believe. I'll make you a mixtape. <laughs> can you print it for me so I can have something to throw? <laughs> All right. So Dunkel and this undercover cop, uh, <laughs> Dunkel and this undercover cop Lisa Thomas, they're becoming regular drinking buddies. They drink at a bar called Wit's End. Wait a minute. This is my kind of undercover. Yeah, this buddy. is working. Oh. Fucking, <laughs> you just get drunk all the time and work at Carl's and Jr. Try to get a guy to admit murder. Dude, she said uh, they would work from the mornings until mid afternoon, and then they would go to Wits End and play play pool and get drunk. Oh man, it's the life, baby. This sounded cool. It does. And he would get handsy, and he would um make advances toward her. And at one point, he asked her, "Do you want to feel my balls?" He's like two balls back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> she declined. Okay. He was always persistent with that shit, and she said oftentimes like she'd be bending over to take a shot in pool, and she would feel a stick rubbing between her cheeks. Wow, what a Whoa. dog! He is a dog. Nasty yeah. bitch. Now to that point, there was one time where he did get over on her, and was able to, I guess, catch her at a low point, where he grabbed her boob and jacked off in front of her. In the middle of wit's end. Yikes. <laughs> now, I wonder, did he feel the wire when he grabbed that booby? Oh, true. Wait, do you think she was wearing a wire the she whole time? She was wearing time? a wire. Oh, my now, God. All right, so here's the deal. When we get into <laughs> April of 1985, like, this goes on for, like, a month and a half, where they're pounding around, they're working at Carl's Jr., they're getting drunk all the time, they're just hanging out in the woods doing all kinds of fucking Dude, retard shit. It's incredible, because the wires back then were, like, boom boxes. Mm-hmm. They weren't, like, they weren't inconspicuous. Yeah, they were like gerbils, brother. So she's like, all right, fuck, I haven't gotten him to admit to these murders yet. I might have to give him a little something so that he feels comfortable opening up to me about some other things. She knows that he was probably responsible for that hit and run where the kid was left for dead. She's like, can I tell you something? She says, um, a couple of years ago, I was speeding and I hit an old lady in a crosswalk, and I killed her in the hopes that that'll get him to admit to one of the murders he committed. But he's like, damn, that's crazy. She's like, I did something similar, but I didn't kill anybody. So she, and that's where he left it? That's where he left it. Yeah. So he never admitted to any of this shit. Now, on this day in April, they're drunk, they're walking home. And he sees a house where he can see a stereo through the sliding glass door window. He's like, I'm going to take that stereo. So they get, he's breaking into this house to see if he can get the stereo out of there. And while that's happening, she's talking into her wire saying like, he just admitted to hitting the kid. So that's an attempted murder charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the police come, they arrest him for the burglary. So while he, he doesn't stay in for the burglary long, I don't know why they weren't able to keep him for admitting to hitting that kid. So I don't know. Maybe he didn't give specifics onto what kid he hit. Yeah. But he said that he did the same thing to somebody else, but they didn't die. So he gets out for that burglary. And during this time while he's out in July, that operation's done. She's no longer an undercover cop working at Carl's Jr. in July. Another 12-year-old boy from this Belmont area is killed. Jesus. <clears throat> and it's especially fucked up. Like, that interview that I mentioned with this with this cop, Lisa Thomas, like, yeah. she says, everybody tells her what a good job she did, which she did do a good job. In. At Carl's Jr.? Or <laughs> 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 She's assistant manager. Yeah, it's just like, these burgers have never tasted better. Who the yeah. fuck is working the grill? <laughs> But uh, other cops have told her she did a good job. Okay. And she, she did. But she said she, she Wait, still... do you know, like, was she also getting paid by Carl's Jr.? Like, was she making cop salary plus Carl's Dude, Jr.? Dude, I would imagine so because I don't think you could tell yeah, them. Who, who could know risk. from Carl's Jr.? Right, yeah. Like, if anybody, only somebody that doesn't work at that restaurant. You could maybe tell Carl. <laughs> 
But definitely not little Carl. Not Junior. Yeah, mm-hmm. not Junior. Mm-mm. You know what they call a Carl's Junior in an airport? What's that? A Carl's Junior Junior. I refuse to believe that. I'm not fucking with you. I'm I'm never going to one. Well, you know what? I'll blindfold you next time we're flying in LAX and I'll shove your fucking mouth into one. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I guess that's a deal. But dude, uh this this young boy gets killed. Uh he's hit with a two by four. So it's similar to like the yeah. attempted murder that he tried committing in the early eighties. And he has he's got no um single mode of he'll kill people many it's either ways. stabbing or um car cracking him in the head with something oh yeah or hitting with a car yeah there's yeah he mixes it up he does yeah so july 5th 1985 this is three days after that murder please know that he's probably responsible for that too but again no direct evidence tying him to those murders so they're like all right fuck we got to figure out something he goes to uh for his sentencing for the robber for the mm-hmm. burglary that he committed and because they know that he probably did all this shit, the max that he can get is six years. So the judge is like, you're definitely getting six fucking years. Mm-hmm. So while they have him in there for that, they're able to like break him down. And on October 3rd, 1986, he can, he can, um, confesses to the first two murders. No way. They yeah. break him down. They broke him down. He could have just done his six years and kept his mouth shut, but they really got him. I don't know, man. I, I imagine there had to have been a way they, they could have tied him into these murders. Right. You would think that without him getting the confession, they probably could have proved it otherwise. But do you have any idea how they went about, like, breaking him down in jail? I don't know. Now, in regards to the third one, um, for the third murder, he has a, a cellmate that he becomes lovers with. This guy, Charles Rice, who's in for manslaughter. And Charles says he didn't do anything sexual with him, but. <laughs> That's what they were doing, Jake. <laughs> they were doing gay pussy hands. I together. felt it move. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was great. So Charles Rice, when he becomes aware of what this motherfucker did, because Dunkel tells him everything. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know what? I know a couple of FBI agents that are kind of bad people who if we tell them what you did, we could probably get lower sentences than we could get if you got popped for this on your own, if they're able to figure this out on their own. So in addition to him trying to get a lighter sentence, like Charles Rice knows, like, all right, if I give up information on this unsolved murder... I might be able to help myself. Yeah, I'm going to get out of here in fucking yeah. no time at all. Yeah. So they're able to to take both of them out on essentially what is a scavenger hunt to find this third body. Whoa. And eventually they do find the body, which is located off of some, a place called Highway 280 in California. Charles gets to go out with them? And he what? goes out with him. Whoa. Wow. There's a, there's a transcript which breaks down, like, the, uh, the excursion. And it, it details, like, what the cops are saying to one another, what Charles and fucking and Dunkel are saying to one another. Yeah. And he essentially leads them right to where the fucking body was. I rode by that. I rode down that road. Just last year. No way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you see anything weird? <clears throat> saw Charles out there. No, you didn't. Saw Harry out there. Saw, my, saw your mom back there making Harry happy. What was happy. she doing? <laughs> I don't want to hear any more about that. About your mother? Yeah. Let's just talk about yours. You know what happened to my finger? I don't want to know. <laughs> you, cut, you heard it shaking my mother's hand. <laughs> Is that what she called it? Damn. I don't like this. Let's talk about Jake's mom. Damn. <laughs> All right. Guy can't take the heat. He can dish it. I love the heat. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then guess again what happened to my finger, Mike. <laughs> Man. Bring this heat on. He's Cajun over there. You don't like the heat. I love it. Nah, you're sweating. Look at my complexion. You, you think I don't love the heat? <laughs> Brother, I stay sober. <clears throat> Damn, this is like an episode of Hot Ones. Ooh, he's sweating. He's Ooh. sweating now. I don't sweat. Because he knows that Mm-mm. I tried to pull my fucking finger out of his mom's ass, lost my <laughs> ring, and I got a goddamn cut. She wouldn't let you do that with that finger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> you won again, you piece of shit. <laughs> All right, so our boy Dunkel goes to trial, and he's he's found guilty of the first two murders. This is on December 6, 1989, my birthday. Happy belated. 
Thank you. <laughs> He's found guilty. And it isn't until over five years later that he comes clean about the third murder. Was he holding out hope? Like, okay, maybe I'll get out of here. No, well, he eventually led them to it. Like, okay. I, I kind of described get, it a little bit out yeah. of order. Did he get a lesser sentence because of it? No, well, he was sentenced to death. And then for the third one, because he gave them the information, he received life. So he's, okay. he's still in San Quentin because they yeah. just, I don't think they're executing oh, people man. anymore. I don't think so. So, yeah, he did get a reduced sentence. He yeah. got to mm -hmm. live. Instead, they let Metallica. For that one, yeah. Was that where Metallica recorded Sane Anger, their music video? Oh, they uh, that was at, yeah. at the prison. wonder if he's in it. Bopping around. He could be. <laughs> did Charles also get a reduced sentence in the end for his... That's a good question. He probably did. His help. I can't say for certain, but I'm sure he, he did. He wasn't in jail for that long anyway for manslaughter, yeah. right? No, that's, got, that's less than a dime, right? That's not, I don't... Like, <laughs> yeah, what, do you think, what do you think people usually stay in the most for? It has uh, to be first-degree murder. Like, any other kind of killing... Kidnapping you're probably going to get out. Murder. In San Quentin or just prison in no, general? No, just prison in general. I feel like assault. You know? Yeah, you get sent if you don't pay your child support. Those are... But I mean for, like, if you're going away for, like, What ever. keeps oh, like, you oh, okay, in. Yeah, okay. yeah. What keeps you in, yeah. Yeah. First degree. And even that, people get out for if it's just, like, one one incident, you know? <clears throat> Damn, that's crazy, man. Involuntary murder. Reckless endangerment, maybe? Like, if there's... No, you get out quick for those. You do? Okay. Yeah. Maybe, um, <laughs> You said that too, sure. <laughs> yeah, wait. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the I was worried about no damn endangerment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kidnapping. Definitely anything with money will get you locked up for a long time. Uh, they don't want you yeah. fucking with money. Yeah. Hmm. Don't fuck with my money. <laughs> I'll lock your ass up. You fuck with my PayPal, you're going to find out I don't play, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you do that. You say that to yourself every time you transfer money. <laughs> Still alive in San Quentin wow. to an account that isn't mine. <laughs> and he's been there for 30 years? Yeah, brother. How old is he now? 60, 60, 63. That's crazy because he was like, uh, he like not only murdered the kids, he diddled the kids, right? You never, uh, yeah. You never I don't did. like to spill all the grief yeah. details. I'm glad we didn't hear yeah. all of that. Thank but uh, like the kid that he stabbed, yeah, twenty times by the lake. He assaulted him before that. I know, at least one of the kids. He forced him to strip, and was like holding Jeez, the um, the board that he used to beat him to death, like over his face as he's telling him like what he's going to do to him. Jesus. So I'm glad you brought that up, Jake. I mean, for fuck's sake, man. I we're fucking, just about fans. I regret Jake, it. We almost made it out. Now I'm going to have nightmares. This yeah. sick trauma pig over here. <laughs> <laughs> oink, oink, give me some trauma. You might, I like that. We, we should make trauma pig t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we're the trauma pigs. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to bring up things that you wanted to forget. Oh, man. <laughs> I watched a documentary on elephants last night. Very wholesome and nice. It is nice. Yeah. Was it about the one that went to that lady's funeral and stopped her dead body? Uh, I love that one. <laughs> it's just about the, this Indian uh, group, um, like families that just rehabilitate like lost elephants. Oh, that's beautiful. It was very sweet. Did it make you cry at all? No. Watch episode three of The Last of Us and I think you'll cry. <laughs> you like elephants, John? <laughs> He's sitting next to one. I'll start feeding him peanuts. Ah! Is this how they jerk elephants off? <laughs> um, of course I like elephants. Dumbo was my favorite ride and movie as a child. Why? Because it reminded you so much of yourself. <laughs> yeah, I had big ears. <laughs> and your mother was dead, wasn't she? <laughs> I don't think that's the... Did she die? I get Why Bambi I and Dumbo confused. Which one got shot? Which one got shot and had her tusks cut off? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Bambi. Okay. I get my Disney matriarchs confused. Do you know the, the song uh, Baby Mine? No, what does that mean? From Dumbo? No. You don't so remember you, it? No. Can you sing it for us? <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> sing it. I never heard it. I don't know it. No. Just a little bit. Give us a little bit. I sing all the time for you. Give us a little taste. 
Give no. us a little taste. No, I'll cry. Do you want me to sing and then you make me, you, you me No, I'll cry if I sing it. No, you won't. I will. Jake, sing the song for him. I don't know the song. I would sing it in a heartbeat. Like, I'm, I've am i been waiting for this opportunity. To belt? To just belt something out. Oh, sing it. Oh, man. I don't know any Dumbo. You don't know fucking shit, then. <laughs> How fucking dare you? <laughs> Give us the first line. <clears throat> Baby mine, don't you cry. That's what make you cry. is a baby of mine or baby mine? Baby mine. That doesn't make any sense. How are you baby crying when this song doesn't? Mine. Close your eyes. Baby mine. Don't you cry. I'm not even close to crying. Yeah, I, <laughs> I am soaking wet right now. There he is. Yeah. He's about to go pick up a shift at Pika's. So I don't remember what happened in Dumbo. Um, when this song is being sung, is somebody dying? No, it's just a nice sentimental moment oh. with with Dumbo's mom and baby Dumbo. Is it at the end? No, it's at the beginning. Was oh. this fucking Benjamin Button Dumbo? <laughs> it's when he's a baby. <laughs> Not fucking Benjamin Dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> What animals you like, John? <laughs> <laughs> this started because he said, do you like elephants? Dude. <laughs> Give me one animal you like. One animal that I like. <laughs> I like... Coyotes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Think I was going to say that? I didn't know. Well, you are an outdoorsman, so that does make sense. You ever seen a coyote? On video. <laughs> Wait, John, when did you get into the outdoors? <laughs> <laughs> the day after I saw my first episode of Impractical Jokers. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say this in regards to your point, Danny. When I first met John, he was one of the most dapper guys on the scene. Thank you. Thank you. I did used to keep it tight. Mm -hmm. Had a nice little haircut. Had uh, collared shirts, wore a size 32 waist, mm, model. large button up. God yeah. damn. Mm. That's when Mike used to be dripping wet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you used to have the, the glasses too. I used to wear glasses sometimes, sure. Mm hmm. Used to be a little piece. You are still. Thanks. So you're you're you, just a different piece. So you saw the Impractical Jokers and started dressing like a lesbian school teacher? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, what's the correlation? No, I was already in uh, synthetic fabrics by that point. <laughs> he had already transitioned from metrosexual. Yeah, you could also make those pants into a tent. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Fried my ass again, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> nope. All you can do in these pants is piss, shit, and cum, Mike. Can't even fart in them. <laughs> I don't want to fart in them. I got my own sweatpants to fart in. Do you? Yeah, I do. All right. You don't ever, you don't ever uh, pick up pants that you know you farted up and smell them just to see if they still stink? Every once in a blue moon, maybe. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Mike is keeping us in the episode like the feds are searching our houses for for incriminating evidence. He's like, so you guys like animals? <laughs> Let's go. Favorite shapes and colors. Yeah, yeah Jake, talking to my, yeah. talking oh, to my yeah. lapel. Yeah. I was just about to say, I feel like you're wearing a wire right now. <laughs> man, who here loves animals, man? Mike, you ever, um, you ever hit and run? <laughs> I have. <laughs> okay, get specific and say it into my phone. Wait, what's the statute before you continue with? I never hit somebody. Okay, I've hit a car and run. Okay, it's not what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, hit a person and run? No, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. I've never done that. I've hit a car and run because I didn't have insurance. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Didn't hurt nobody. No, might have crippled somebody financially. You guys almost get hit by a car before. Probably I must have. Yeah, yeah. Nothing jumps out. I've I've been hit in an accident. Mm, same, yeah. But I mean, like, not like fucked up, not yeah. pedestrian, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Furman? No, um, no, 
Never mind. I almost just experienced a memory of me watching someone get hit by a car. Mm. But I was going to claim it as my own. For that didn't happen. Do it anyway. Yeah. I was walking across the street and this car didn't see me and it just did a left turn right into me. I flipped over the hood and some fat kid in the red light didn't stay, decided to turn right on a no turn during red just so he didn't have to stay so he could make the helium open mic. <laughs> Watch someone bleed out. Drove wow. away. <laughs> Somebody in that story is a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> How was the open mic? <laughs> Did you I do got, good that night? I got five minutes. It was great. That's all that guy had left. <laughs> look look where he, he is got the now. light? Yeah. He went to it. Damn. I hope they're okay. My lord, Jake, you pull <laughs> over to help the fella out? Nah, I, there was enough people. You know, there was Okay. Enough. That's fine. Yeah, that's like, acceptable. But yeah. like, so, but I was leading the charge. Like, we were the first cars at the red light. You were the first one to, to leave the scene. We're like, oh shit. Jake was filming one of those, what happened videos. <laughs> well, as soon as that happened, the person behind jumped out of their car in the left lane of the opposite way. So they jumped out, and then somebody next to me jumped out of their car. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, they, they got it. I mean, you don't want too many people to call them. Yeah. Then you'll jam up the signals, you know? Exactly. And I, I got an open mic to get to. I yeah. mean, I'm running late. <laughs> but they're fine. I'm sure they are. Check on them. You know what? I would double check, Jake. If you were hit in the 2013-2015 era uh, on 24th and Sansom, or no, 24th and Chestnut, please contact me. Let me know you're okay. Reach out. Jake's going to pay your medical beers for the rest of the year. <laughs> medical, medical beers? <laughs> That's what he's going to do. Doctor, yeah. he goes That's through. what he's going to do. His bill's already been paid for. His medical beers, however, have not been paid for. And for the rest of the year, you get to jink. <sighs> Whoa. I'm t it's happening Whoa. to everybody. Jink. There's a carbon monoxide leak in this studio <laughs> right now. <laughs> Damn it. But at, right after I, I shit on you for it, that's what you get. That's what I've been sitting here. I've been working on my Santeria. Man, it's, it's working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go home, sit in a hot tub, <laughs> do some jinking. <laughs> you know? Jink about it. Yeah. How cool would it be, though, if we had a carbon monoxide leak and we all died mid-podcast? <laughs> oh, my God. That would be nice. Yeah. And we just streamed forever. <laughs> it just stayed live, and we're just like, man, they really lost steam, huh? Danny, please make this vow. If we should happen to die during a carbon monoxide leak that you somehow survive, please keep the cameras running. Oh, my God. The of chat course I will. <laughs> Chats just lighting up like buck, 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 buck. <laughs> But also, please <laughs> get a carbon monoxide detector to see. Nah, we're good. <laughs> nah, I had to take out all the smoke detectors because of stoner dots, so we'll never know. <laughs> all right, well, there you have it. What a peaceful way to go. <clears throat> oh, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. That would be very nice. What are you going to do when you get to heaven? Mm, go right to the buffet. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. I'll be hungry. <laughs> I didn't realize they had a buffet up there. Oh, brother. Oh, didn't you ever see Defending Your Life? No. Oh, it's a really great Albert Brooks movie. Okay. And that's one of my favorite scenes as he gets to heaven, and it's like this beautiful breakfast buffet. I've never seen that movie. Oh, you would like it a lot. That's oh, great. it's great. I should have watched, I should have um, written that movie. Damn. Yeah, he 40 gets, years ago. He gets to heaven, he gets in a car accident, like trying to fuck with his CDs on the road, and he uh, drives head on mm -hmm. into another car gets to heaven and the premise is that once you're up there, before you get to heaven, you have to defend your life as though it's a court case. Mm -hmm. So they decide whether or not you advance to heaven or you go back down to earth. Oh. Oh, so you're in like that weird in-between stage kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Like go back to earth as yourself or as a new person? That's different shit. Like okay. there, there's a very cool scene where you could go to something called <clears throat> the Past Lives Pavilion and a movie's playing of all the different life forms that you've taken. One of them, I think, is an elephant. Okay. Full circle. Mm -hmm. I do want to watch this movie. It's a very interesting premise. Yeah, I, I like anything where, any movie that that introduces the idea of unlimited food. Mm -hmm. Like that, Little Monsters, all the cheeseburgers oh, in that. Hook. Um, Hook. Oh, that I like that, yeah. yeah. Buffet. That was, oh, yeah. Hook's a great movie for a fat child with no friends. <laughs> I love that movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we go? 
I think that's it. Yeah. That guy's a real piece of shit. I wish he didn't stab and hit so many kids to death. Yeah, Jake had to bring up the fucking worst parts. We were gonna, dude. Yeah, you did initially we were... describe him as a pedophile. That's and, that's why. And I, I suppose that's all the detail we needed. We kind of can put the puzzle together. I, I was just making sure he was an actual pedophile. True. We don't want to besmirch his name. If he was just a guy that stabs kids twenty times, we don't want people thinking he also fucks them. If, he, a, if he doesn't, John, we if are he almost done. He's a murderer. We were so close to being done. I guess we can cut that part out then. I don't like cutting anything out on this podcast. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Take me or leave me, warts and all. <laughs> Is that a phrase? I just made it up. Ew. <laughs> just sound like someone's godmother right now. <laughs> that reminds me, I do have to have a few skin tags frozen off. I think I might be doing that for the first time. Do you want to go together? That Damn. would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to take Could a trip guys... down to Delaware with me, sure. I'll go with you. All right. Could you guys freeze them off each other? Could you do that? If that would be cool if they let us. My dermatologist is a very cool guy who would probably let us use the freeze gun. Nice. I believe you cracked a joke for him last time, right? Yeah, Dr. Rhodes. Can you say that joke again to, to end the episode? Yeah, he mentioned that he was going to see Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. And I was like, oh, it sounds very cool. And as he's squeezing, uh, freezing my skin tags, I'm like, you want to hear a little song I wrote? And I sang, I love Dr. Rhodes because he takes the time to freeze my skin tags, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Brought the house down, Jake. I believe it did. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can catch us at the dermatologist sometime. <laughs> Before spring, before beach season, Ooh, gotta get baby, those things yeah. off. Is that when you go? Is that when you have to go? Is before beach season? I've never had this problem before. I went in summer. Okay, not for any specific reason, not for beach body stuff, but yeah, I just was able to finally get an appointment to the dermatologist. And you know me, brother, I'm freckled up. Yeah, so I'm always at risk for skin cancer. Sam, I should go get my um my spots looked at. Do you want to check each other for spots? Yeah. I would like to film you going to the dermatologist, though. I want some clarification on that third nipple. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, I totally forgot I, about yeah, those. Yeah, we 100% need okay. a those, doctor to anoint that nipple. Little-ass baby pimples. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll get the documentation. In fact, I I'll, need br I'll bring a camera crew. <laughs> like the movie Ed. He's Jake, I guarantee you he's going to ask, are those mosquito bites? Oh. <laughs> Is that a small tit fucking no, joke? No, that's a mosquito bite joke. <laughs> Dude, you said like Ed. You'd Ed be, TV. <laughs> you'd be like Philip Seymour Hoffman and Along Came Polly. I just watched that two nights ago. Oh, did you? Yeah. Raindrops. Uh, oh, yeah, he's doing the uh, behind the music thing the whole time. I miss Philip Seymour Hoffman. Me so too. I love yeah. that guy. God, he was so fucking funny and yeah. good. Mm. Good too. And then I like the party a little bit, which I like in my guys. I know, man. I like a little party <laughs> in my guy. I like a guy that's always on the verge of death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's so good. How do you think he's so good? Because he's on the verge, baby. Did you ever see him get jacked off into the sink in the master? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sure I have, but I, uh, I love don't remember part. it. It's a movie? Yeah, it's a movie called The Master. It's, it's based off of Scientology. That's the whole movie. Just it, him getting... It's two hours of him getting jerked off. off yeah. it's, it won awards. Wait, really? At the... Mm -hmm. um, at the Sinkies. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sinky for best sinkful goes to. <laughs> they really need to make these easier to open. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman, the master! <sighs> you would love it. Uh, he's getting jerked off into the sink by the lovely a Amy Adams. Whoa. Yeah, beautiful lady. Enchanted. Yeah. Yeah. She was in that. She's in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Up in the air? Jake, don't take it there. <laughs> there. No, she's, I know, she's I know not how much you love air. air travel. I'm sorry. No, she's not. That's um Oh, she's not? She's from the Mara. Perfect. Uh Yeah, this is not her. Something Mara. Mara. Kate Mara? Oh. I just watched Up in the Air recently. Rooney Mara, maybe? No, it's the girl. Everyone's screaming at the. <laughs> I cannot believe we're still being recorded doing this. I think it's Kate Mara. She's not an up in the air. 
She is. Uh, up she in the, might, up she's in not the, the one that George Clooney takes around. It is. No. Amy no. Adams is not that lady. However, the lady that we're having trouble remembering her name, that's who George Clooney takes, which I believe is Kate Mara. It's not. She's the one from Pitch Perfect who does the cup song. Give me the fucking phone. Anna something, maybe. Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you guys for sticking with us for that. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm right, somehow, right about nothing. All right, if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. If not, consider joining us on Patreon. It's $4 a month or 40 bucks for the entire year. You get every episode early. You get extra episodes every month. You get live AMAs every month. All the extra shit we do, like fucking book club shit. We're doing Watch Along soon. Uh, our first movie that we're doing a Watch Along with is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You get to smell this cone if you're a patron. <laughs> All you got to do is write to us and be like, Mail me that cone. I want to smell it. Mail me that cone. And we'll and mail it. We'll that fucking it cone will be in the mail the next day. <laughs> all for becoming a patron. You know someone's going to request the cone now. I'll mail it to him. Don't smell the cone. Oh my God, <laughs> I just smelled it. <laughs> but that's only possible by joining us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash lilstinkers. L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. And also I want to mention my book. Thank you to, for those of you that have bought my book on Perks. If you haven't bought it yet, please check it out. It's at onperks.com, O-N-P-E-R-C-S.com. I'm very proud of the book. I'm glad that people seem to enjoy it. People have bought the book. They bought the audio book. The audio book is one of the true delights that I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. All the boys came through. Well, most of the boys. Uh, <laughs> people like Chris Wood, John McKeever, uh, Matt McCusker, Tim Butterly, Mary Rudzinski, fucking Ryan Foster, Chip Chantry. David James uh, did the voice of an older black woman for the, his entire narration. I can't say enough good things about this audiobook, and they all brought it to life. So once again, check that out at onperks.com. Please get yourself a copy. I promise you, if you like anything I do, you will love this book. Boys, is there anything else you want to promote? No, but he's right about the book. God damn, I started reading the... I couldn't wait to get my copy in the mail, so I had to start reading the ebook. Oh, that's and very sweet of you. I'll tell you what, as far as LOLs go, it's you and the Impractical Jokers. Oh, I have the hardest. Oh, wow. Thank you. I take back every mean thing I've ever said about you. That's we'll wait high till praise. next week. Mike, I read it this weekend uh, when I was in Michigan, and oh. fucking Jesus Christ. From it, page one. From page, like you've- Cackling. So, just like, seriously, like for as much as you've promoted the book- and like talked about how it it, it is a, a good book. Like you've undersold how funny this is. Yeah, oh, I think that you. the thank focus you. from henceforth needs to be from other people, just telling you how f actually laugh out loud funny it is. That means a lot. I, to me. uh, I got had the privilege of recording the audio book, and there were so many times where I'm like, first of all, it's hard not to laugh in the room because I didn't want the mics <laughs> to pick up, but like multiple times I'm like. Don't put this out there. Please. <laughs> Please. No one needs to know this. Dude. <laughs> Just the amount of times you talk about reaching into uh, the old cavity to pull out a prize. Brother, hey. You're, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You're incredible. And this book just, oh my God. There's Everyone a, needs it. There's one post that. Oh my god! It might pop in my brain one a day, <laughs> like one a day. And I'm, yeah, <laughs> and it haunts me. I'm like, why would he? Oh, I'm so sorry, dude. No one stopped him, <laughs> like, dude. Mike, you need to take the book and do that thing like Tyler Perry does, and just reapply it the same shit everywhere, and get one of those one a day calendars. Oh, with buddy, a different yeah. on perks. Oh, that's actually a great idea. Yeah, a lot of people would have. Oh, it. I love that idea. Make it into a great. play. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. To word around the country? <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Get an ensemble mm -hmm. cast? Oh, man. I'm actually going to have a uh, an official book re release show at Helium. Oh, right. It's going to be on Sunday, May 7th. Uh, I don't know the tickets are for sale yet, but... That's awesome, man. We'll make a fun thing out of it. Oh, and yeah. um, I don't know what the format's going to be yet, yeah. but um, if you guys are willing to take part in it, I would love to have you guys there. Busy that yeah. day, but I, <laughs> if you're show, maybe, maybe I'll be able to go. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be there with fucking bells on you. Well, know, I'll be there with your mother, brother. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. All right, love you guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>